Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, some developing news. Within the last hour, the social media giant Facebook has said it's identified a coordinated attempt to interfere in November's midterm elections in the United States, deleting dozens of fake accounts and pages. The company said the accounts were discovered two weeks ago. Although there's no direct evidence to link them to Russia, there are similarities. Ed Hauke has been going through the details and is with me now. So what have Facebook said exactly? It's an extraordinary position that Facebook find themselves in. They are now finally getting on the front foot after a series of US federal investigations have found bad actors, as the social media giant calls them, interfering in um, US democratic or civil society activities before the 2016 election. Now they've found 32 pages and accounts which appear to be linked to bad, bad actors. Uh, and which have been followed by 290,000 users of Facebook. And this is quite extraordinary. And the fear is that these accounts will be used to influence the midterms and to, uh, in some way, undermine US democracy. And what sort of material has been on them? It is an extraordinary selection of not uh, what you'd expect to find. These are not pro-Trump messages pumped out in order to support the president or to support a Republican pl platform. I mean, we all expect there to be um, a huge amount of uh, uh, bad actors supporting Trump, I suppose, after the exposure of Cambridge Analytica and previous investigations. But actually, these are very often uh, anti-Trump messages or messages designed to um, uh, develop a fan base and then twist at a later point that fan base in such a way as to ensure that they can be used by these bad actors. Now, behind this, potentially, is Russia. One of the uh, administrators of one of the pages is linked to the internet research agency from that country. But Facebook are keen to stress that they don't know the full facts yet. Thanks, Ed. Well, joining me now via the internet uh, from New York is Spencer Ackerman, who's the national security reporter at The Daily Beast. Or well, what do you make of this? Uh, it's yet another revision in Facebook's uh, accountability and depiction of itself and its involvement in U.S. elections. You'll remember that shortly after the presidential election in 2016, Mark Zuckerberg had said it was crazy, that was his word, crazy, to think that Russian trolls had impacted the election. Now we are continually seeing these dribs and drabs of disclosures modifying that position to the point of obliterating it. Uh, where Facebook's security officers now are trying to be proactive, getting out in front of several investigations um, and the overwhelming amount of hostility to its stonewalling on Capitol Hill uh, to say that it's taking very seriously the prospect of upcoming election interference by what it calls bad actors. And, and when it comes to who are the bad actors, obviously everyone will talk about Russia first, but... It could be anyone, couldn't it? Well, here's some interesting things that Facebook says it's identified. It said that it doesn't have uh, the kinds of connections uh, with the uh, St. Petersburg-based troll farm, the Internet Research Agency, that it saw last time. But it's also not saying that. It's, it's hinting at several places. Uh, one of its blog posts right now, disclosing what it found, talked about evidence of some connection to Internet Research Agency accounts without really going through that. Um, it does say that they found these new accounts to be more sophisticated in their outreach and their, their uh, willingness uh, to spread these, these inauthentic messages. It talks about how uh, now the accounts are protected uh, by VPN tunneling, uh, that they're using third-party accounts uh, to try and um, set up payment to purchase uh, the 150 ads for about $11,000 that it found on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, so it's kind of implying that the Russians are better at, at covering their tracks without coming out forcefully and saying that it was the Russians. Now, U.S. lawmakers on the Intelligence Committee are going that far. Uh, Mark Warner, who's the top Democrat on the Senate Intelligence Committee, uh, said that these were Kremlin-tied accounts. I mean, after months and months of revelations about fake news and propaganda on social networks like Facebook, you would hope that the power of these messages has been 
neutered somewhat. You know, does it matter, do you think, that this is going on now, now that everyone's been pointing it out and saying, you can't believe what you see? I think it does matter that uh, there's still, despite uh, anyone, uh, social media companies warnings that these things are happening, it's hard when you're using Facebook or Instagram to be at the front of your mind on guard uh, that what you see might in fact be fake, might in fact be an imposter account, might in fact be manipulated. Facebook um, in particular is just the 21st century public square. And so it's not you know, going to really do for the company to simply tell its users to be vigilant. The company itself has to be vigilant about stopping these imposter accounts before they start spreading uh, messaging that undermines democratic foundations. Spencer Ackerman, thank you very much. Thank you. Now, it's not often in the fake news saga that we find Facebook on the front foot, but tonight they were confirming on the website the company had taken down 32 pages and accounts of what they believed to be fake accounts, containing what they said were sophisticated attempts at a coordinated political influence campaign ahead of the US midterm elections. Facebook said it thought those who set up the fake accounts, including some on Instagram, went to much greater lengths to obscure their true identities than the Russian-based internet research agency has in the past. The company said up to 290,000 accounts have followed at least one of the fake pages since March 2017. Facebook hasn't definitely tied the pages to Russia or Russian organisations, but has said it found evidence of some connections between these accounts and the accounts used to interfere in the 2016 election. Let's cross now to Dave Lee in San Francisco, who can flesh all this out for us a bit. Dave, just talk us through the kind of pages that have been suspended and, and where they led. Yes, well, 32 pages and accounts, I mean, it doesn't seem like a lot, does it, given that there are 2.3 billion people on Facebook. But between them, those accounts were able to post uh, as many as 10,000 messages to Facebook images and so forth, and also buy 150 different pieces of advertising at a cost of around $10,000. And so while it was a relatively few number of accounts, the impact uh, appears to be quite great. As you mentioned, uh, more than a quarter million people uh, interacted with these accounts in some way. And I think the most interesting aspect about this is something we've seen as a bit of a pattern now from Russian influence campaigns, is that as well as stirring up anger online, they're also attempting to bring this into the real world. Th these these uh, accounts apparently uh, created 30 events, organized 30 events using Facebook, events that were to take place in the real world, protests, demonstrations, that kind of thing. Um, and one of them was due to happen next month on August the 10th, where 600 people had said they'd planned to attend and 2,600 said they were interested in an event. This was something Facebook's telling us was orchestrated by a foreign power, uh, likely Russia. So online influences campaigns very much spreading into the real world with the intent, as ever, not to necessarily back a particular candidate, but to just get Americans angry, get them on the streets, shouting at each other, arguing with each other online. Uh, and yet this is obviously another example of, of how that's been attempted on, on Facebook. Dave, thank you very much indeed. We're going to make sense of what this tells us about the state of, well, US democracy and indeed the role of the technology firms. Joining us from Chicago is Harper Reid. He was chief technology officer for Barack Obama's re-election campaign in 2012. And the cybersecurity expert, Dr. Alexander Kleinberg. Thank you both um, very much for joining us. Um, Harper Reid, are you impressed with Facebook for coming forward, for making these efforts tonight? So right after their stock dropped so drastically, I think Facebook is really taking an about face here and then changing their behavior, which is good for us all. Do you think that they came forward because of the stock drop or do you think they came forward because they've recognized the magnitude of the issue now? I think it's a little bit of both. I think, you know, Facebook is still a relatively young company. They're still, I mean, they've been around for quite a while, um, over 10 years, but they're still learning. Um, they're the first company that has the network of this size, and I think there's a lot to learn. With that said, you know, I would, of course, like to see them come, uh, you know, up earlier and talk about this stuff earlier, but it's good that they're coming up now with this. Can you, does it worry you what they have found these 32 pages they've removed I, I mean I'm no expert but 32 pages doesn't sound like that much I think what's interesting is that we started to see this type of behavior um, on social media in early 2014 um, and a playbook was obviously set what we saw in 2016 is obviously the playbook um, that works 
And so it's, it's no wonder that we're starting to see this again, especially as we come up to the midterm elections here in the U.S. Um, and I think we'll see it again from other organizations, not just Russia or whomever did this version, but we're going to see it from all sorts of organizations. This is apparently how you do politics um, in 2018. Yeah. Alexander Kleinberg, if I can come to you, how keen do you think Facebook was to get this all out? I mean, do you think they just want it off their plate um, so they don't bear the responsibility anymore? Well, in part, they're following up on uh, notions and ideas that they already floated about a year ago. So the departing chief security officer, Alex Stamos, actually announced that they would out uh, foreign influence actors misusing their services in a naming and shaming campaign. And I think this is a good first step. And what is the next step then? Quite possibly to go and actually identify the actors that purchased those accounts and actually show how they might be connected to political entities. They haven't done that yet, and that might be a signal that they're sending right now to those countries or those governments or those companies that are hosting those accounts that if they persist in misusing their services, they'll be outed. And um, do they know, are they the best people to do that? Because we know that Facebook has tried to trace back the IP addresses and they think that they may have led to Russia, but they've got no sense of being uh, certain of that. I mean, is this now something that basically U.S. intelligence agencies have to do? Well, I think the U.S. intelligence agencies and the British intelligence agencies could probably do it as well. But obviously, it would be better if Facebook simply enforced their own terms of services and encountered a misuse of their product. And that's actually what's happening now. And that's something that you would hope they would be able to do by simply uh, maintaining their systems properly. So it's actually a step in the right direction. I mean, this is, um, this is a kind of, Harper, a kind of hoovering process, isn't it? But there is, in a sense, nothing that stops all these pages and new activists and new websites and new people coming back and doing exactly the same thing again. Is the, is the whole model of Facebook essentially broken now if it is this porous? Well, I think one of the really interesting things about this is um, some of the events that were created that were then deleted today, um, some of those events turned into real events with real people organizing on the ground. And those people co-opted these fake events. Um, and then the question is, you know, where do the people who are actually protesting go when they're being influenced by foreign powers? Um, there still is a need to protest in some cases. And I think a lot of these people are confused about who is creating which events. So um, just explain what you're suggesting. Do you mean that they would go and they would protest anyway without the social media and the well, fake news, or do you think they disappear? Well, I think there's a, there's a big question. There's a lot of issues here in the U.S., and there's a lot of issues that people are taking to the streets to address. Um, and when we have foreign influencers who are influencing us um, and trying to sow more derision, more derision or, uh, and more anger, yeah. um, then those protests you know, may not be as peaceful as um, we would like them. You know, I think we can, we can talk about our politics in a peaceful way in the streets and get some real work done, um, but we don't need these to be accelerated and more anger, et cetera, put into it, which obviously these accounts were meant to do. Alexandra, I, I don't know how you resolve this now. I mean, Facebook has changed its algorithm rhythms. It's advertised the problems on TV. It's made people aware of them. Zuckerberg's been before Congress, and yet nobody's pretending that taking down 32 pages of fake accounts is going to end the problem of fake news. Where, where is the next frontier and how do you battle it? Well, actually, last year in the French elections, um, Facebook took down around 70,000 accounts. Uh, we thought the number was much smaller until it was later revealed by U.S. congressmen how large that number was. So they actually have done this type of thing before. They haven't actually make it, made it public. And that's actually the next step. You have to deter actors from misusing your services. And this is why even a, such a small number of accounts is a big deal. It's sending a very clear message that effectively they won't tolerate this in the future. And the next step is they will be pointing fingers. Great to talk to you both. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks for joining us here. Thank you.